So Zhang Ander is going to get us underway. We play the best of the seven mighty mouse. First Jerry frame. gets on here. He's playing. Zhang Ander to break. The most uh, celebrated player in the game, Ronnie O'Sullivan. I was just chatting to Ronnie before the match. He was showing me his, his novel, Framed, which is out today. It's been published today. He's very excited about it. And was saying that uh, if it's successful, it could well be a series of them. So that's a whole new career opening up for him. But this is what he's known for, of course, at the snooker table. And that's what he's known for, knocking in a long red first shot. Yes, beautifully played. Of course, there's always an element of getting the cue ball back up uh, into bulk there. And the little thick on the brown means that the break ends there, but he's tucking in behind the green. Sullivan won. Played well last night, I thought, you know, it was always going to be um, a different match playing Jimmy White. I tell you, the intensity of that match was, was there. They both tried as hard as they possibly could, which, of course, you'd expect. There's no sentiment out there. He made a 1-4-1 break in frame two to settle his nerves. Sometimes the game just comes ridiculously easy to Ronnie. But Zhang Ander is a decent player. Played at the Crucible on a couple of occasions. Was well known for that match against Stephen Hendry, which he could have won. Uh, he's been around longer than people think, I would say. Yeah, he's a dangerous opponent for sure. Has uh, offered up a chance here, though, for O'Sullivan. Which he knocks in. Yeah. The, uh, the novel I mentioned, it's, it's loosely based on his life, which at times has, has read like a bit of a novel. I think he's at that stage where he still wants to play snooker, still wants to win, but also Six. is looking at other avenues. Of course, he works with us here at Eurosport. Seven. Made sure he got on the red that was stopping the black going to both corner pockets and getting on it quickly. There's a secret to his success, apart from these brilliance, it's his shot selection, as I say, always early 14. in a break, looking at the, the ball, the problem ball to get out of the way or maybe get in behind to make things happen. And he does that very swiftly. 15. So into the bunch. If he does go into it, it'll be the left-hand red that he'd like to stun into. Didn't quite catch them as usually he does. If he'd have played on the left red, they would have split even better than they have now. There's one at close range to the middle looks difficult. There's a thin cutback, which brings the cue ball right through bulk and back out again. Controlling the white is as difficult as the pot here. And see the problem he had going into the green. 23. Could be another snooker in behind a colour here. Keep the pressure on. Only looking at the table, realising that there's hardly a red that his opponent can just lay up to in getting out of this snooker. Well, the third shot he's played in this match, the first one was the break-off, the next two has been snookered. Like I say, the side of the bunch usually is the way, but look at these reds. How can he possibly get one safe here? Well, that's fairly safe, but I'm afraid he's going to have to do it again, or depending on whether Ronnie decides to play at long range, I don't think he'll get out of his chair. There's an argument here to hit these as hard as you can and hope to fluke one. Because all the plans can just go wrong. Playing with a strategy. Foul and a miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four.
Not entirely sure, I know which red he's trying to hit. He might be trying to come three cushions into the red at the bottom of the right, the little bunch. But they're all spread so loosely. Didn't really threaten on the first two attempts. Make that the first three attempts. Foul and a miss. One or solve and four. I think it might be time to just go the sledgehammer route here. Hit them hard as you can. See, that's the problem. You know, he's, he's hit a red and he's left one, an easy one. So he's, he didn't really take any sort of a risk. He was in a lot of trouble, though, having said that. Could be in a bit more in the next few minutes. Sullivan and Higgins could play in the quarterfinals. They're currently tied on 28 ranking titles each. The last two tournaments Higgins won weren't ranking events. They're tied with uh, their great hero Steve Davis in second place on the all-time list behind Stephen Hendry, of course now retired on 36. 13. It has been a rivalry, as John Higgins was saying in the studio. It's been a friendly enough one, but they've uh, 14. kind of pulled each other along over the years, and Mark Williams as well. 25th season for these three great champions. Yes, I spoke with John Higgins recently about this and it was in an interview and... 21. He said that they're not friends and he didn't mean that, that they're enemies. They're not close friends, you know. They're, they're 22. work colleagues, if you like, if that's the right way to describe them. But there's a, an absolutely mutual respect. I don't think they've ever had a crossword. They probably mix in different circles, you know equally good at what they do. It's a little bit like Davis and Hendry. They're probably, the three of them, become really good friends when they've retired and there's no more competition because Davis and Hendry didn't used to speak to each other when they were playing at the top level. Now, good pals. No reason not to be. 30. Now, one thing Ronnie has done here in these best of sevens, and it's crucial to do it, is stamp your authority on a match early. Poor oh, Zhang Ander has been in some pretty evil snookers. And the frame is gone seven. already before he's really got into the match. 38. You don't start well in the best of seven. You're always chasing the game. Yes, he broke off. And the next two times he was at the table, he was snookered. And the last uh, several attempts, last time, left that red on. Frame over. 45. Yes, he's got this novel out, but I suspect there are several more chapters left to be written in his snooker career. 46. He can make a century if he wants to, and uh, what he needs to do is ensure that high-value colours are taken with all the remaining three reds. 51. He can afford to drop two points. 52. So that means two pinks or a blue, but everything else with the black. 59. 60. So, like I say, black with this, 65. And exactly 100 is possible. 66.
73. Of course, O'Sullivan has won the ranking event here in Northern Ireland, the Northern Ireland Trophy. Last time it was staged, 2008. That's the waterfront hall. It's not going to be a century, he misses the brown, but a great start, oh, he oh, really oh, dominated oh, that frame in, in every department, and that's 78 break, more than enough to give the rocket the opening frame, he leads Shangander here in Belfast by one frame to nil. Frame two, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. The rocket has lift off here in Belfast, one nil to Ronnie O'Sullivan, first to four, to reach the last 16. Very busy day. It's taken four days to get to the last 32. By the end of the night, just eight players will remain in this Northern Ireland Open. Of course, the corresponding day in Manchester at the English Open, it became Black Thursday for the seeds. A lot of big names tumbled, including O'Sullivan against Chris Wakelin. Two rounds to be played. We shall see what happens over the course of the next few hours, but John Higgins already safely through. Of course, Mark Allen will be up uh, in our third TV match here against Robin Hull after this one. Well, he's covered up that red on the right with the brown, which is... Uh I'm sure a great relief to Zhang. Hasn't seen a ball yet, as we've said. Absolutely nothing to go at. His pot success is naught from naught. And even here, I'm not sure whether he can get past the green to go for the same red. No, I think that's uh, the point with Zhang is we'll, we'll gauge his chances in the match when he actually gets a chance to pot something. Assuming that will happen at some point. But of course, the longer it takes, the more pressure he's under. Close, but of course he's cold, I would say. Not so much in temperature, just in lack of table time. It was actually closer going in the middle than the intended pocket. Pink to the middle is a very good shot. There really wasn't much room there to manoeuvre. Interesting what John Higgins was saying after his match about the table. There's a few big bounces off cushions. I think not so much that. I found it interesting that he said that when you're not playing quite as well as you can, you notice it more. And I think it's because what happens then is you're not in complete control of the cue ball. So you're using the cushions more and more to regain position, and that's when you notice the, the odd inconsistent bounce or whatever. Seven. Fifth. 
15. Sixteen. Twenty-three. Well, he seems to be very relaxed today. Last night was a little bit of a tense affair with his great friend Jimmy White. Twenty-four. Today he's come out and he's just looked very really assured around the table in this frame and a bit we've seen. 1 pot so far and that was at the end of the previous frame on the brown where he had a chance for a century but in live play he's not made a mistake of any kind 32 no it, it was difficult playing Jimmy it's hard to play someone who in any other circumstance you'd want to win that's the point really we were saying about Higgins and Williams you know it's, it's better in a way you're not friends or too good of friends with the players because it's no room for sentiment out there Remember Neil Robertson, he beat Joe Perry in the Wushy Classic final, 10-9, and was in floods of tears after because he denied Joe his first ranking title. Well, it looked a good shot, a good split, but the Reds haven't really fallen very kindly. I don't know if he would risk that red up into the yellow pocket, the one that... Uh, above him now with awkward queuing I'm sure he's looking to play a good safety shot and just to keep the pressure on keep his opponent playing all his shots from the other end 29. I haven't seen Zhang play even walk down to this end of the table yet Ronnie was 39 which is never a good sign no, O'Sullivan all season has played really disciplined snooker. It's funny, he's, he keeps saying he's trying to play himself into form. A lot of people would be very happy with this form, but of course he has uh, exceptional standards. Let's not forget, though, he's been in two finals, came within a frame of winning European Masters, was runner-up last week to John Higgins in Coventry, the champion of champions. That. It was lovely queuing, it only just crept in, but played it well. Interesting the way he sights there, he actually doesn't favour one of his eyes. He's right down the middle, which is quite rare for a snooker player, not to just favour left or right eye. Now that Steve Davis was someone who queued straight down the middle, not like most other players. Anyway, this shot is even more difficult than the red. The pressure's on, if he misses this, he does potentially more damage. Fine shot. Well, if you're not going to give him a chance, and when he came to the table, he didn't have one. You've got to make your own chances, clearly. Yes, I remember Zhang Ander, first time he qualified for the Crucible, beat Ricky Walden in the final qualifying round, and he finished off with two centuries under intense pressure at the uh, English Institute of Sport in Sheffield. Just fantastic. This is a slightly different scenario on TV, but uh, even so, he's a dangerous young player, I think. He's unlucky there to have not uh, got any further with that break. Zangander. Yes, that was the year I was speaking about, wasn't it, where he played Stephen Hendry and, and took him close, which proved how good he was. And He's not quite gone on from there. Beat Judd Trump, though, this season at the World Open in China. Wouldn't be regarded as one of the very leading Chinese players, but as uh, I say, he, he is dangerous. He's had results. No, that's a good safety shot. I think the problem is that you've got a lot of Chinese players coming through and we're looking for the next... Ding Jinhui or the next world champion to come from China or the first of course in, in in that case but it doesn't mean that you can't be very good earn a living 
because we're searching you know, for the next superstar. They can't all be superstars. Some very decent players from China who are doing well out of the tour. It's another good shot to start a break. Well, in the previous round, he beat Chris Wakelin, who, of course, beat O'Sullivan at the English Open. Four. He's currently 84th Five. in the world, so he's trying to haul himself up into the top 64 by the end of the season and th thus stay on the circuit. There are a couple of other ways you can stay on, but that's the main one. It should be said, though, that Ronnie O'Sullivan in the really, really provisional rankings is actually outside the top 16. That's taking off 11. all sorts of points. But just bear in mind with the World Championship, of course, at the end of the season, it's only the top 16 guaranteed at the Crucible. Oh, dear. Well, after some good pots, he's missed that one. Yeah, for no obvious reason. Uh, just maybe thinking about getting the cubal through the gap between the other red and the pink. Took his eye off the pot, perhaps. Yes, I think, you know, there's a, I'm sure that Ronnie's got it in his mind that he might you know, lose his place in the top 16. It wouldn't be on, on, on merit. It would be because he's not played in all the tournaments. I think if he plays in enough tournaments, he'll find his way back in there, all right, on those provisional rankings. He won't have to qualify. But, of course, it happened to Ding last year, or last season at the Crucible. So, it can happen to anybody. Nine. That was a struggle, that red. That's the thing with the ranking system. For those of you who don't know, it's a two-year rolling 15. system. So points come off. Two years ago, Ronnie won the UK Championship. So those points come off. He's trying to compensate by putting more on again. 16. All done through prize money. So 43 the difference, needs two reds from here, 43. any colour with this wouldn't be enough. Twenty-four. He's probably got his mind on that red up the table to the right middle, if he gets in behind it it's not a bad shot. And he's gone a different way. He very rarely gets things wrong. That's beautiful. That's even better than playing on the loose thread to get on that one. Wonderful cannon. And already, 32. he looks sharp. Well, we've barely been going 24 minutes. Zhang did have a chance in this frame. Didn't get one in the first, but was in in this frame. Missed the red to the bottom right of your screen. And it was a big mistake. As Sullivan looks very, very sharp. It's a different environment to Brilliant. last night when it was pretty tense against his great friend Jimmy White. This is another day, another match, but an excellent performance so far from Ronnie O'Sullivan. 42. Doesn't matter about that, he's done the damage. Zhang and they're in frame two, did have a chance, but ultimately it's gone the same way as the first did. And Ronnie O'Sullivan already halfway to victory. Keep an eye on that while you're watching this match as well. I'd say that would be a little less serious than what we're watching here, but you never know with uh, Joe and Jimmy.
Well, he's a bit close to this. He's got a slight angle. It's very difficult to manoeuvre that cue ball as he usually would be able to with the ball so close together. moment he seems to be just struggling hey. he's putting good balls he's not quite getting in behind the next shot and well it was a point that John Higgins made I thought quite uh, graciously that it's been unfair occasionally for players who've been playing out on the uh, the non-televised tables not even the secondary table maybe playing their matches in different lighting in front of different audiences right over in the background there is where the other tables are they have to be put into or onto the TV table under lights. It takes a bit of acclimatising. I thought it was a very generous thing for him to say. I have to say I disagreed with him, though, because you earn your right to play on the main table through what you've achieved. Ronnie O'Sullivan, John Higgins, great champions. And tournament winners will find their way here. They all started, well, right at the, in the very first qualifying round in the days when there were 10, 12 qualifying rounds when the game was open in 1992. Long summers at the Norbreck in Blackpool, honing their craft. There's uh, Zhao Yulong, who of course was beaten by John Higgins, just keeping an eye on proceedings here. Of course, we saw O'Sullivan uh, showing a few of the Chinese players the ropes on the practice table. Yeah, well, demonstrating shots like that, I think he was actually. Safety shots, that's another very good one. I mean, the red by the black, you can see a bit of it, but presumably not enough for him to attempt the pot. But now he's got to avoid them on the way up the table playing safe. Uh, check the plant, which doesn't seem to be on either. The two reds to the left corner. He's got to catch this thin. He doesn't want to go near the red and black. It's pretty good. Pretty good shot. Under the circumstances. And Ronnie acknowledges that. While watching this, spare of thought for the referee, Rene Tinga, not refereeing this match, but he was refereeing last night, Anthony Hamilton against Ken Doherty, which finally finished at 1.40 a.m. Hamilton won on the pink after Ken had got a couple of snookers. Last frame, 51 minutes. I saw him at breakfast, though, the ref. He, uh, he seemed in reasonable spirits. Had he been to bed or had he just, uh, just got back finishing up? Well, I say at breakfast, this was about 10 o'clock, so it wasn't like first thing. Well, it's another good pot, and... Uh, Plenty to go at here. Cue ball just uh, flicked off the pink. Finished well. 
but he had a chance previous frame and when he missed he didn't get another one and if he breaks down here where the balls are it could be 3-0 so he's under pressure to get involved in this match to actually make a contribution here Once again, though, just not really in complete control of the cue ball. Always having to pull out a good shot to recover things. I guess, compared to Ronnie O'Sullivan, most players are like that. Not quite got the same finesse. But like I said, I think he's just acclimatising and unfortunately it's taken him a while. This will be another good shot, another good positional shot needed from it. That's Foul. unlucky. That five. really is unlucky. We kind of saw from that low ang uh, camera angle that it was always on its way. There it is. Oh dear. Never really in control of that shot. Certainly could have done without that. Just starting on the Eurosport player, it's Karin Wilson against the Thai Akani Song Serm Sawad. And the winner of that match will play the winner of this one in the last 16 this evening. Six. Seven. Twelve. Thirteen. Now this is going to take a good shot to keep the break going. Well, he doesn't play as many rest shots as other players because he's got the left-handed option. On your Sullivan, 13. Usually he's pretty good with it. But just slightly overcut that one. Six. Seven. Well, if he was brave, he could 
play the red off the other red to get the black out and get it into play. I don't necessarily think it is the shot, but certainly the shot is on to play the red off the other red. I can fully understand why 2-0 down it wouldn't be something he's thought too much about. But it's very Thank difficult you. to win the frame where the balls are and with the red and the black there, the red above it, you know, it's all blocking off that pocket, really. High-value colours not available. see it I think he's got the option to play it again here but this time it's even more difficult so he's not really getting anywhere unfortunately a lead of 12 points but that won't last long if Sullivan gets back in Sang under 16. Well, obviously, looking for a thin edge. Foul and a miss. Sang under four. Shang under having a think here whether to have them put back. He is. Jan Shears is the referee. Uh, when, that's not they're not doing the mannequin challenge there that's where they were before and it's slightly over to needs to be slightly over to the left actually well anyways caught it but well not a bad flick either off the blue to say the least you certainly feel the worst for Zhang if he doesn't get on the scoreboard soon Well, he's done well there. The cue ball close to that back cushion. He's knocked it in. One. Four out of five for long potting. Yeah, he's. Uh, you can see Ronnie's eight, 100%, but that's two out of two. Zhang, four out of five. Round ball. Well, it's taking the shape of a, a kind of frame that O'Sullivan not all that keen on, you know, with fragmented play. But unfortunately, Zhang and the one. for Zhang, his lead of 17 points, he's not going to hurt one of O'Sullivan just yet. If he can get the black into play, and he's well back into the frame. He's, it's a very scrappy frame, this one, by his standards yes and also Sullivan seems to be harder and harder to frustrate there was a time where it was relatively easy to get under his skin when matches went scrappy but this season in particular he's been really disciplined because he is a great safety player himself Well, if uh, the brown is potable to the right corner, past those two reds, he might try and play on it from this red. Very awkward bridging here. Oh, 
I think the problem with frames like this is not not so much always the players not tolerant of them. It, it, it's quite easy to lose concentration because it's not anything you'd practice that the ball's going awkwardly. Zhang is not going to move the two reds by the black because he's a few points in front. Well, he's not unlucky to get a double kiss because if you think it's on, it usually is. for running to refuse the green. There really was no hope of getting onto a red, I'd say. Oh, yes, and there's an example of what Dave was saying, that he is a, a terrific safety player when he resorts to it. Okay. Well, he's just got a great snooker brain, very quick, instinctive, sees the, the whole table, sees the right shot to play. Foul and a miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. One. Well, the part of that speed was the best part about it. Oh, yes, well, this is what I mean. How can he? Get the balls open so easily. Five. Two great shots, very ad adventurous shots. As you can see, the other red is now in play also. Six. The point I was making that the lead was not a big enough one for Zhang. He struggled for a long while to just get a small advantage, and it's wiped away him almost immediately. Eleven. I have a feeling he tried to develop the other red 12. there. Well, this will be some shot. If he can put a bolt colour here and move the red out, it would be a brilliant shot. It is a brilliant shot. I don't know if he's on it, but I'll tell you what, that took some skill. Oh, majestic shot on the ground. Honestly, he made it look simple, but it's one of the best shots I've seen this week. 17. No room in playing the cannon to actually make the red potable after it. At times, the man's an absolute genius for me. Well, where the balls were when he came to the table, to win the frame in one visit didn't really look on, but looks like, looks like he's going to. Doesn't need the pink. 23. Yes, I think looking at the scores, Davies just realised that as well. He doesn't need the pink, which helps. 26. I think a lot of players 30. would have put their opponent back in because the miss had been called. He smashed the red in the middle pocket. And within a few shots, he's won the frame. Remarkable. Well, there are other players involved, of course, but he's on a bit of a collision course with John Higgins in the quarterfinals. Of course, they met in the final last week in Coventry. Two of them playing 35. the best snooker of the tournament. Zhang's having a look here. He's 23 behind, so he needs two snookers. He looks a bit punch drunk by what he's just seen there because the, the table was basically safe. Well, I think what it is, you, you know, you see a little break and you think, well, that wasn't anything, was it? It was just, just a small break, 30 or 40. But sometimes they're better than centuries when they're made in that way. 
Yes, there were several really good shots, but the one where he freed the brown off the sorry from the brown freed the red off the side cushion. Particularly special. Well, the black's over the pocket, so he's conceded. Well, there's a really good little break he put together from a very unlikely situation there, O'Sullivan. And Zhang Gand has got it all to do, to say the least, because Ronnie O'Sullivan is leading 3 0. I think he went for that. He was not very close to it. These may be short matches, and we know that best of seven is not the true test, but it's enough time for the class to shine through. And there's another oh. fine shot. He actually was saying yesterday that uh, the tip he thought on his cue was a little soft, a little spongy. Five. It didn't that seem to affect him too badly in his first match. He played okay last night as well against Jimmy Wyatt. Six. But what it will do, it'll get firmer, it'll play in. The longer he's in the tournament, the more he'll feel at home with it. And he was saying that he hopes that by the end of this tournament, hopefully if he's still in it, and indeed the UK Championship, it should be spot on. And that. Thirteen. Any snooker player will tell you that that is as important as anything. When your tip is feeling at its best. They're always a bit of a sponge when you put them on and it takes a bit of bedding 14. in. Seventeen. Well, into the bunch. And it's worked out pretty well. Reds haven't really split. One's gone safe. He's joined the other one on the cushion, but he's still at the table. What can he pull out of the hat here? Uh, not sure about that shot for him. 24. The black not available to the left corner. He didn't have many options. Oh, he's trying to conjure up some magic here. Played the cannon. 29. That left hand red. He may still try and drop this in down the cushion rail. It's tight. Which sometimes helps. But that's not in. Ronnie O'Sullivan. A rare 29. mistake. Unfortunately, for Zhang, things are going from bad to worse. 
Well, if Ronnie's got the shot to swing the cue ball into the bunch from this. And he's using all his control most of the time, so not playing that shot. But to get the Reds open would be his objective. Might be able to play it here on the yellow. Two cushions. <laughs> Fabulous shot once again. Goodness me. Four. How quickly things change in a frame. Only this man can do it for me. And how quickly he sees the shot as well. Within a split second, he knows what no. shot he's going to play. Ten. All those threats to retire that he's made 17. in his career. Thank goodness he didn't follow through on them. Took that one season out, but came back at the end of it 18. and won the World Championship again. This has been a, a stroll in the park for Sullivan. He started it so well, I think, the way he played the first frame. Didn't let Zhang get into it. And he's, uh, his opponent has never settled, but Ronnie is, once again, he's not been dazzling, but there's been some beautiful touches along the way. 29. Well, he looks 30. relaxed. He's playing terrifically well. As I say, it's, uh, you, you're thinking at the moment it's between him and John Higgins in that quarter-final. They're not through yet. They've each got to win a match tonight, but it's shaping up for Five. a clash of the Titans tomorrow. Six. Yes, and of course, Mark Williams in that little section as well, playing John, isn't he? So all of those great players are very closely matched where other parts 41. of the draw not so. Yeah, it's not so much a quarter of the draw as a pantheon of the greats. This match, as you just saw, not 42. been going 53 minutes. Forty-eight. Forty-nine. Fifty-six. Oh, well, this is just brilliant stuff. It really is. Fifty-seven. He's completely in control of his emotions, which, of course, for Ronnie O'Sullivan is particularly important. And uh, his game is looking as good as ever, based 64. on this match. Right from the start, he's just 66. Laid down his authority. Zhang barely got a shot first frame. That set the pattern. He's had chances here and there, but that third 69. frame, we saw the break O'Sullivan made to win it. Wasn't much 35, but my word, it was quality all the way. <laughs> Even by his imperious standards, this has been a brilliant performance by Ronnie O'Sullivan. And he is through to the last 16 of the Northern match. Ireland Open in double yeah. quick time, just 54 minutes for the match. He looks relaxed. He's playing some terrific snooker as he signs a few autographs. We'll see him tonight. He's beaten Zhang Ander brilliantly by 